Refinery is limited this evening. This follows a four-day journey covering over 1,000 kilometers. But behind these are many questions that most Kenyans are still grappling with. I sat down with Ogutu Okudo, the country, country manager rather, at Spring Rock Energy to put into perspective these issues. Let's listen in. Since 2012, when Kenya was able to discover oil, it's been a very um, exciting moment for Kenyans. Um, there's been a lot of need to manage expectations, and I think especially with the early oil pilot scheme as being flagged off on June 3rd and Sunday by His Excellency the President, it really does put into question, um, you know, the viability of the project, um, the viability of the oil in Kenya as we speak right now. Um, if you look at the entire project and what we're doing with the early oil pilot scheme, we're talking about an estimated cost of $63 million. And when you look at the greater oil cycle and you understand um, project cycle of an oil well and oil wells at that, you'll be able to see that there's a capital expenditure that goes into it, the operating expenditure, and some of these costs were not put in when we were looking at exporting our oil. So being able to add these costs, $63 million, is quite a lot. So we're going to have to obviously manage expectations. This is not a profit venture. Uh, this is more of a venture that Tala Oil and the government have decided they want to be able to analyze and look at um, the different characteristics, um, whether it's from the reservoir, whether it's from the logistics aspect of it. So this should be very interesting and should be able to shed a bit of light um, towards the direction of where Kenya is going with her oil and gas industry. Social media is an uproar. Everyone is asking questions. Is the price going to go down? Why is it we are, you know, exporting it, exporting the oil to be refined? And I think, you know, since 2013, um, the refinery based in Mombasa has been closed down and has not been functioning. And for that to happen, the government needs to be able to pay SR the $5 million, which they need to do. And in line with that, it's very important that we get this refinery up and working because we've seen in other countries around Africa that are oil produ oil producing countries such as Nigeria Angola when you start using refineries out of the country it really opens up a lot of loopholes for corruption because you've seen in many different cases around the world of best practice that that has happened so if Kenya really wants to develop the oil and gas industry sustainably in line with Vision 2030 and be able to use it to transform us to a, you know, a middle income economy, then we need to be able to be firstly transparent, uh, accountable to our people. So this even just starts from the disclosure of the, the PSC that exists um, between the government of Kenya and Talo Oil, which still has not yet been tabled for the public to see, yet we've seen this happen in other countries, Talo Oil, um, is operating such as Ghana. We can definitely expect to get some income out of this but it's also again very important to manage the expectations. A lot can be done with it but it's also very important to make sure you have the right in the right institutions in place, you have the right oversight that's taking place, you have the right people negotiating these deals. You look at for example right across again Uganda, um, making sure is your capital gains tax um, in favor of the country or is it more in favor of the companies operating? You know, it's very important to look at the oil and gas industry and see the incentivization it can do into an economy because it has a lot of money out of it. It has a lot of opportunity for jobs, employment, and also for the very Kenyan spirit, which is entrepreneurial, and a lot of people want to be able to add value to the value chain. So being able to have all of that, there is a lot of opportunity, but it's also important that we manage expectations and not focus only strictly on oil and gas, as some countries have done, like uh, Nigeria, that are going through they call it the oil curse, the resource curse, because then you stagnate all your other industries, you don't invest in agriculture, you don't invest in the other ones, and like the oil price does every eight to ten years, it comes up and down. You are hit very hard.